Well, this evening, this will kind of go along with that, how God works things out in, in our lives. We don't have, you know, I'm so thankful that we don't have to walk this road of life by ourselves. Amen. Amen. We have a, a friend that will stick closer Amen. than a brother, always there, always know what's needed, always on time, and is always able. Praise <laughs> the Lord. All right, take your Bible and turn to Mark chapter number 5. Mark chapter number 5. And we'll begin reading in verse number 22, and I'm going to read down through verse 34, and we'll just see what the Lord has for us this evening. When you find your place, Mark chapter 5 and verse 22, if you will stand to your feet as we read the Word of God together, uh, Mark chapter 5 and verse 22. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse, when she saw, when she, excuse me, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall behold. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and thou sayest, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. <laughs> Boy, that faith, that's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Let's go back to verse number 25 and look at that real quickly. It said, A certain woman, and then I want to read the next four words. A certain woman which had an issue. A certain woman which had an issue. Well, tonight, with the help of the Lord, I want to uh, preach just a few moments, uh, a little... Uh, short message, if you will, simple message about dealing with issues. Dealing with issues. And I'm so thankful that we don't have to deal with the issues of life alone. Father, we thank you so much, God, for your precious word. And Lord, I'm so thankful for the uh, examples and the stories and the illustrations that you show us of things that took place in uh, actual folks' lives and how you met needs and how you worked things according to your will. And, and Lord, we realize what you've done 2,000 years ago, God, you're able to do in the day in which we live. Lord, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never change. And Lord, help us to glean some truths from these uh, scriptures tonight. Help us to learn and grow. And God, help us to realize you are in control. Help us to depend upon you more. Help us to trust you more. Help us to live for you more. And we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Dealing with the issues of life. And you know, we have all kind of issues of life that we face. Uh, you know, it may be a financial issue. It could be a... Uh, a physical issue. Uh, some folk just have issues. You know, uh, have you ever ever heard anybody make this statement? Boy, I'm telling you what, they got issues. Yeah, <laughs> they probably said that about me before. They probably said that about you, man. They got some issues. Yeah, when we came to states for, boy, I found out there's a whole lot of folk uh, up on this end of the state got issues, amen. But hey, I got them too. You know, we just a messed up people. We have issues of life. Uh, you know, I got to thinking about that, uh, that thing about issues. And, you know, uh, everybody has them. Uh, nature has them. Uh, this creation has issues. Hey, I've got this little dog. 
Uh, well, we got three dogs. I've, I've preached about Jack before. He's my big dog. He's my dog. But uh, Norma's got these two little miniature docks, and I call them weasel dogs. That's about what they look like, a little weasel, little legs about like that. Well, uh, one of those little female weasels, uh, she'll get up in that big dog's face. She'll stand up on her back feet and just get right up in his face and pawing him and licking him. And, oh, he, he's taking his hands and pushing her away and doing this and that. And then that crazy dog, she'll stick her head up in his mouth. Looks like a lot. I mean the whole head, brother, not just the nose. His head's like, ah. Oh. And I thought, man, you got issues. One of these days, he's he going to get fed up with that mess, and you're going to have a big issue. You know, uh, but we have issues. I mean, we're all messed up. We all need help. And we need some help dealing with issues of life. And I'm so thankful that we have a God that's able to help us with the issues that we deal uh, with in this life. Here is a story about uh, the Lord Jesus. Uh, a father had came to him, and uh, he had an issue as well. He had a, a, a problem. He had a dire need in his life. Uh, his daughter was at the point of death. And if we read on in the story later, uh, we find out that his daughter actually died. He had a big issue. He needed some help, and he came to the only one that he knew could give him some help. And uh, he, he got his issue taken care of later on in the Scriptures as, God, as Jesus went to that house and he raised that little daughter uh, from the dead. But as he was going, he was met by a crowd that were thronging him. And uh, there was this woman in verse 25. Uh, she had an issue. She had a problem. And uh, there's three things I want us to see tonight about her issue that I believe will help us deal with our issues of life. The first thing we see uh, of her issue was her condition. Verse 25, it says, A certain woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. Now, I'll tell you what, this was a serious issue. You say, Preacher, what, 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 what kind of issue of blood that was? Well, without going into any details, uh, the Bible calls it, calls it the custom of life for a woman uh, that she goes through every month. Well, it's supposed to be one time a month. But this woman, she had an issue of blood. She had that custom of women for 12 years, continually, never stopped. Ladies, how would you like to have that kind of issue in your life? Boy, I tell you what, there would be some ladies probably committing suicide, killing themselves if they had to deal with that issue 12 solid years, day in and day out, and all the complications that go along with that. I'm so thankful that God made me a man, amen. I tell you what, you know, I feel sorry for y'all ladies, but I wouldn't want... These people that have this, uh, this uh, gender uh, surgery and they change yourself from a man to a woman, they're an idiot, brother. <laughs> There ain't no way in this world. Ladies, bless y'all's heart. I feel for you, but I surely not, wouldn't want to be you, amen. amen. Uh, hey, you know, uh, ladies have to go through a whole lot. It, right. They do. And, I, you know, I wouldn't want to be one. Uh, you, do you know, I, I'll just add this. Uh, these people that believe, these Hindus, they believe in this reincarnation foolishness. Yeah. Well, they, they believe if, you know, in car, uh, what, uh, karma, is that what they call it? Where, you know, if you do stuff bad in this life, you got to pay for it in the next. Or what, karma, is that what it is? Okay. And, uh, Lord, I'm glad we ain't got to do with that because, man, I'd have a bad next life. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all laugh. You'd have a bad next life, too, if that was true. I'm so thankful that's a big lie out of hell. But uh, they believe that if, uh, if you're bad uh, during your life, uh, you come back something crazy like an insect, a grasshopper, or a cockroach, somebody stomping on, you know, something bad like that. And it, it, if you're a little bit worse, you come back as a dog. And, you know, I don't know if that wouldn't be too bad a thing. You know, they, people, my, my dogs live pretty good. I take care of them. They don't have to worry about nothing. But if you are really bad, now they believe this foolishness. If you are really bad, I'm telling you, you did something bad in your life. You know what they say you come back as? A woman. That's, that's bad, ain't it? That's bad. I didn't say that, ladies. So you don't want to be a Hindu. That's what they believe. Craziness, craziness. But uh, how'd I get off on that, amen? 
Oh, the 12, the 12 years. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine facing an issue. And no doubt this woman had got desperate. I mean, uh, hey, any of us would be desperate if we had to face an issue like that for 12 years, day in and day out. All the pain and the, the suffering that goes along with that. Oh, well, it'd be awful. And so she was at her wit's end. She didn't know what to do, and she was willing to do anything. Uh, we see her condition. The Bible says in verse 26, uh, and had suffered many things of the physicians. Oh, she, she had uh, went through all the treatments, went through all the tests, went through all the things, the biopsies, no doubt, all these things, and suffered. I'm telling you what, those doctors will make you suffer. That's one reason I don't go to the doctors. I don't like that pain mess. You know, I just soon hurt with the, whatever it is and have them go po probe and prod and do all that stuff. Uh, you know, they told me when I turned 50, y'all, to go get a colonoscopy. I said, you out of your mind. <laughs> If it's not broke, I ain't going to try to fix it, amen. And uh, if it is, I don't want to know, amen. I want the Lord to fix it <laughs> or take me home one. And that it would not be a bad thing right there. But it said, suffered many things of the physicians. And you know, I, I'm so thankful that we do have doctors and we do have uh, physicians and medicine and all the, the, uh, the uh, modern technology. I, you know, I'm so thankful that we do all have all that. But I'm telling you what, a whole lot of those treatments, it, it's awful. You know, some of these cancer treatments is awful. I know what they, they carried uh, Timmy Belcher out there, and, and that was awful. I'm just telling you, awful treatment, and it didn't help a bit. And here, that, that's what this, lady, this woman is. Her condition, boy, she'd suffered uh, of many physicians, and also she had spent all that she had. Took everything. Spent everything she had on doctors and, and, and uh, procedures and, and, and treatments trying to get some relief from this condition that she was suffering with, this issue that she had in her life. Not only suffered, spent, but she continually sank. Look what it says. Spent all that she had and was nothing better but grew worse. Didn't anything help. Just continually got worse and worse and worse day by day by day for 12 long, awful years. And she just at her wit's end. She didn't know what to do next. She was in an awful shape. But you know, before she would ever get any help, she had to realize she had an issue. She had to realize she had a problem. She had to realize that there was a, a need in her life. And you know, before anybody ever comes to Christ, they need to see they got an issue. Before a drunk will ever get any help, they need to see they're a, they've got an issue. Before a dope head will ever get any help, they need to see they have an issue. When a liar or a cheat or a thief... Uh, they'll never get help till they realize they have an issue. She realized, she said, I'm in a mess. I'm in a mess. I've been struggling. I've been suffering. I've been spending. I've been sinking. And it's no better. Doing everything I think I can do <laughs> to fix the issue. But do you know, I can't fix issues a whole lot of times. We need some help. <laughs> I'm so thankful that we got someone can help us. Amen. Amen. We see her condition. We got to realize our need before we'll ever get help. Oh, preacher, things will get better. Well, they may and they may not. You know, a good place to get help for the issues of our life right here on this old-fashioned altar. Condi her condition, not only her condition, but we see in verse 27, her coming. Her coming. When she had heard of Jesus, came into prayer. <laughs> when she heard that there was someone that could relieve her of her issue, give her some help for her issue, when she heard about Jesus, she came into prayer. Amen. Hey, when, when, when I heard that I could get some help in my life, I came to Jesus. Amen. When I found out that were, the condition I was in... Uh, being lost and being religious and trying to work my way down. When I realized that, hey, I came to Him. I made my way to an old-fashioned altar because I knew my condition was terminal. If I didn't get saved, I was going to die. Hey, if she didn't get some help, 
probably she would die physically from that awful disease. You know, you can get so anemic that your body just can't take it no longer. And, uh, but when she heard about Jesus, look what, it, look what happened. She heard about Jesus, and she came in the press. She headed out toward him, and she uh, came up behind him and touched his garment. She handled him. She had to get to him and touch Jesus. Hey, when you make your way to an old-fashioned altar with an issue of your life, hey, we come not just to kneel down and, and, and spend and just, just take up time and take up space. We come so that we might touch Him. Amen. <laughs> well, when you touch Him, He'll touch you. Amen. And when you touch Him and He touches you, oh, you're on the way to getting your issue resolved, Amen. praise Amen. the Lord. So she, her condition in, in verse number 25 and 26, her coming in verse number 27, but in verse number 28, we see her cure. Look what it says. For she said, if I may touch but His clothes... I shall be whole. <laughs> hey, she realized the only help I can get is from Him. Amen. Do you know the only help that you'll get for the issues of your life? I don't care what they are. Yeah. I don't care if they're physical. I don't care if they're financial. I don't care if they're family issues. I don't care if they're uh, friend issues or, or work issues or school issues or whatever they may be. Where you're going to get some help and where I'll get some help is from the one that can fix the issue. Amen. And that's the Lord Jesus. He's able. He can take care of any problem. He is the great physician. He is the uh, uh, eternal banker, if you will. Do you know that uh, uh, God owns the cattle upon a thousand hills? Oh, God, I don't see how we're going to make it to the next month. I don't see how we're going to eat this Amen. month. The money's just not coming in. God owns it all. You know, I told somebody the other day, maybe we ought to just pray, say, Lord, how about just sell a few of them cows, amen? You own them all. He's able. He's able. Verse 29, her cure. Look what it says. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she had, was healed of that plague. It was prompt. It was a prompt cure. It was a prompt cure. It was an immediate cure. He took care of the problem right then. He didn't say, I, I want you to go home and you pray four or five Hail Marys and you do this and you do that. Do some good works. Help a little old lady across the street. And all these things. And you go to church and you, you make sure you go to Sunday school and do this and do that. And go out on visitation. He didn't make her do a thing. When she came to him by faith, <laughs> she touched him. And he touched her <laughs> and made her whole. He took care. It was a prompt cure. Not only was it a prompt cure, but it was a powerful cure. In verse number 30, And Jesus, immediately knowing himself, that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? That virtue is, it means power. He realized that somebody had touched him. And he realized somebody had a need. And he realized that that healing power had had flowed out of him, and he knew. And it is a powerful healing. God's, God's all-powerful. Nothing's too hard for him. Amen. He can fix these old bodies. Amen. He can fix messes in our life. Amen. He can even take our little quirks and issues that we have and straighten those out as well. He can. He can fix us right up Amen. if we touch him. And he touches us. The cure was prompt. The cure was powerful. But the cure was public. Look what it says in verse number 33. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. She fell down before him, and there was a crowd still there. They hadn't cleared out. Everybody was still around there. And she told him what the problem was and what she had done and how she was healed and she made it public. You know, we ought to always give God the glory. If He works in our life, I don't care what it is, from the very minutest detail that we think doesn't even matter, if God worked it out for us, we ought to tell somebody. Amen. We ought to testify. We ought to give Him thanks and give Him praise and give Him glory. We ought to worship Him uh, for what He has done for us in our life. Amen. No matter what it is. Oh, that's just insignificant. Nothing is insignificant with God. Amen. But you know the greatest thing that we ought to give Him praise for? 
We ought to give Him praise and honor and worship and adoration and love and service and joy for what He did for us on Calvary. Yes, sir. Amen. When He saved us. You know, I think a whole lot of times we have lost the excitement. We have lost the joy and the peace that salvation brings. We have. We've got complacent. We've got comfortable. We've got uh, to the place that, that we just ha- have, have lost sight of what He did for us when we, when we got saved. Think back right now in your heart. Those of you that are saved by God's marvelous grace, there may be some here tonight that you can't think back because that's never happened in your life. Hey, that could be taken care of. That issue can be taken care of here tonight. But you think back in your heart the day you got saved. Oh, preacher, I, you know, it wasn't nothing really special just like any other day. Well, you must not got saved like I got saved. You know, I don't understand that. You know, the Holy Ghost is the same Holy Ghost. Ain't that right, brother? Yes, sir. Jesus is the same Jesus. Amen. Salvation is the same salvation. He doesn't save uh, one person one way and save other person another way. He saves us all the same way. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That grace of God, that undeserved love, unmerited favor is some wonderful stuff. And when that grace of God is applied through faith to a heart and life, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin, brother, I had me a time when I got saved. Woo! I'll tell you what, I was raised... In a house where my daddy said, boy, don't you cry. Don't you cry. That's, that's a sissy. That's a, that's a weakling. You ain't supposed to cry and show your emotions. And I, to this day, and my daddy's at, at home with the Lord uh, this evening, I have never seen my daddy cry. Never. Never. <laughs> but i tell you one thing. Son, when Jesus saved old sinner like me, and I realized how much he loved me, and I realized how bad an issue I had, and I realized where I was hidden, and I realized that he took my place on Calvary, and I don't have to go to hell, and he came into my heart, saved me by his marvelous grace, made a new creature out of me. Woo, boy, I'll tell you what, when Jesus grabs a hold of your heart and gets to squeezing, the juice gets to running out. Boy, I was crying like a baby. I thought, boy, well, these people are going to think I'm crazy. Hey, but I've got crazier and crazier ever since I've been saved because it is so good, but I believe we have forgot what it was all about. We have forgot the issue that Jesus helped us with. Amen. Oh, we had a blood issue. Do you realize that? We were in the bad of shape as this woman uh, with a blood issue. She had it for 12 years. Brother, I had a uh, blood issue for 28 years. Oh, I was in a mess. Tainted blood. Sinful blood. <laughs> Woo! But then Jesus came to where I was at. <laughs> and it washed me with that precious blood, that crimson red flow that can take an old sin blackened heart and wash it up white as snow. Boy, it's been gooder and gooder all the time. I'm so excited I don't have to go to hell. I'm so excited that He loves me with an everlasting love. I'm so excited He'll never leave me through thick and through thin. Don't matter what the issues of life are. He is able. He is right on time. And He will never, never, ever let us down. Praise the Lord. And boy, that ought to be exciting. That ought to stir us. That ought to keep us serving Him out of a heart of love and gratitude because Jesus fixed our issue of blood on Calvary. <laughs> Did for us what we could not do. Amen. And so as we live this life, hey, the greatest issue for a child of God's already been taken care of. These other little issues are, are nothing for Him. They're nothing for him. Let me say that again. They are nothing for him. Preacher, you just don't know what my issues are. No, but I know who my God is. <laughs> Amen. And he is able to supply and take care of everything. Everything that we ever go through. Those issues of life. We have to realize our condition, though. We do. We'll never get any help till we realize our condition. We'll never get any help till we come to him. So how, how does a child of God come to Him? 
on their knees. Right. You know, he's just a prayer away. Amen. You know, he's not out in outer space somewhere 10 billion miles away. He's within, within prayer. Yes. Within a prayer. <laughs> We've got to come to him. Amen. And then he'll cure. Yes. He will. He said he would. Amen. Now, he might not cure it in the way we think he ought to do it, but he's working everything according to his will for our good. I'm so thankful. And when he touches us, when he takes care of an issue, he'll take care of it. He will. It'll be taken care of because he is all-powerful. And then when that takes place in our life, I'll make it public. I'll make it public. What are the issues of your life tonight? We all have them. I'll preach. I don't have no issues. Everything's running wonderful (laughs) hunky-dory. Bless your heart. (laughs) Bless your heart. Brother, don't you say that, Brother Russell? Bless somebody's heart that everything's wonderful. We'll pray for you. We'll rejoice with you. But mine ain't like that. (laughs) You know, we've all got issues. But we have not because we ask not. What about that family member? that you, 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 you've witnessed to and you've talked to and you've prayed for and you, you, you've tried to reach them, but they just won't, just won't get saved. God's able. God's able. Don't ever quit. Don't ever quit praying. Don't ever quit agonizing over them. Don't ever quit. Hey, God's able. What kind of what is issue are you facing in your life? Is it a physical issue? He's a great physician. Hey, he's better than any doctor that you could ever go to. Dr. Jesus. <laughs> hey, he's on the case. He's able. He won't mess up neither. Do you know there's a whole lot of folk die from doctor's procedures yearly? Thousands. But Jesus doesn't ever mess up. Don't ever mess up. He does a good job because he made these old bodies and he knows what they need. Well, so preacher, I've got an issue, a financial issue. I just don't, oh, we're just scraping the bottom of the barrel. Hey, I've been there too. Yeah. Yeah, scraping the bottom of the barrel, but it's always been something in the barrel. (laughs) Might not have been everything, but it was enough. He's always fine. What is your issue tonight? Are you realizing you need? Are you coming to Him? Are you trusting Him for the cure? As we're standing on our feet tonight, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, Miss Amy or whoever's going to play, Bo James, you come on. What kind of issue are you dealing with in your life tonight? Jesus is able. No matter what it is. Maybe you just need to come to this old-fashioned altar and say, Lord, I've got an issue. I have got an issue that I just don't know what to do about. I've got an issue that I need some help in, in this area of my life. Hey, you might say, Lord, I've got an issue with a family member, a friend, a loved one that needs to be saved. They won't listen to me. They won't, they won't come to church. I've tried everything. Uh, that's an issue. That is a major issue what about you? Have you got somebody like that? Or maybe you're here tonight and you don't know Christ as your Savior. Oh, this old-fashioned altar is the best place to come and get that issue taken care of. Saved by God's marvelous grace. Brother James sings, uh, you come. This old-fashioned altar is open. <laughs>